Hi guys, Nick here, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today's episode is the first of several in which I'm going to be taking a look at some products from uh, an online direct from China retailer <laughs> called banggood.com. And I admit, I totally giggled the first time. <laughs> I read that name, but uh, I went, I took a look at what they had available, and I was dazzled <laughs> by a, a kaleidoscope of uh, RGB gaming peripherals of every kind you can imagine, and more besides, um, from all kinds of companies that I had never heard of before, um, ranging from like the rock bottom cheap stuff, like five bucks all the way up to some items that looked maybe a bit more uh, premium and of course everything in between uh, and so I said sure what the heck right why not uh, and Banggood was kind enough to send me a few items to review for you guys uh, and I asked for things that I thought uh, looked like they would offer good value and be competitive with some of the uh, higher priced products from uh, well-known manufacturers, uh, manufacturers like Logitech, like Razer, those kinds of things, um, but at a fraction of the cost, of course, right? So uh, today I'm going to be looking at the M639 gaming mouse from a company called eBlue. And I'm really curious to see if it's going to be able to offer a compelling experience or a compelling gaming mouse product at the $29 or $28, really, price point. Um, which is yeah, about half of what you would pay for uh, a similarly specced product uh, from a better known nor uh, manufacturer like Logitech, like Razer. So, uh, that's the question I want to answer today. Is this mouse any good? Does it offer good value? So let's take a closer look at the eBlue 639 gaming mouse provided by banggood.com. So here we have the eBlue M639 mouse. Gaming mouse. Uh, and as you can see, it comes in a plastic box, hard plastic shell, uh, which is, in my opinion, actually a fairly elegant way of packaging such a product. It's compact, it's not overwrought like some of the stuff you get from Razer, for instance. <laughs> Uh, it's simple, it looks pretty effective, it's just this kind of matte, textured, semi-translucent plastic. Uh, it doesn't even get fingerprinty, it's not glossy. Uh, this is great, this looks like fairly exemplary packaging actually, and is much more than I would expect for a product uh, at this price point. Uh, but we'll see what the uh, sort of product looks like inside, what level of protection is offered inside. It seems pretty solidly packed in there. I don't hear anything rattling. You can hear what I mean by the mat, the mat texture. The uh, label is fine, uh, and looking at it, um, a lot of it is um, written in Chinese, which is perhaps to be expected with uh, a lot of these direct from China items, that is the case. It does say here in English, however, eBlue M. 639 gaming mouse is certainly the best armor 
for winning a battle. Hmm. It is coated in red and blue. Okay. And equipped with LED with color options in blue, red, purple, green, and orange. So, uh, this mouse is neither red nor blue. It is black. Uh, but it has, I suppose, that multicolor uh, LED lighting. We'll find out, I guess. Um, it says here USB, which one would expect. Uh, 4000 4, DPI, which is competitive with other gaming mice, and it uses an Avago laser sensor, uh, which uh, is used in a whole slew of other uh, sort of budget-oriented gaming mice as well. Uh, it provides dimensions here, weight, it's about 140 grams. Uh, it has multiple DPI settings listed, 500, 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, and I believe that you can switch on the fly between those. Uh, six buttons and uh, four, four different polling rates, 125, 250, 500, and 1000 hertz. Polling rate is the rate at which the the mouse sends information back to the PC. So a thousand hertz would be once every millisecond. But you want a high polling rate because that allows the fastest, most immediate tracking of movement. And a one thousand hertz polling rate is, is good, that's standard. Uh, it's what you'll see on flagship mice from uh, well-known companies like Logitech and Razer. On the back here, it just says it's Windows compatible. A bunch of Chinese that I can't read and some branding. Nothing too fancy. Uh, anyway, overall, I quite like the exterior of this package, not because it's beautiful or anything like that. I mean, it's your typical gaudy kind of uh, display here with all the lighting and whatever, but uh, it shows the product. It has the critical stats there, specs, uh, and it's compact and fairly no-nonsense. So, high marks on the packaging exterior. Let's open it up, shall we? So the lid, the top of the box, is affixed with these four little snapping, sort of snap lock tabs. Inside, we see foam. And the foam's actually just uh, relatively thin black foam. I can feel right underneath the mouse is right here. It actually kind of humps up and um, pushes this foam against the, the lid. It's a very tight fit for this mouse in this box. It would seem. You can see, look at the imprint of the mouse right there. So, uh, this box is barely, barely adequate for fitting the mouse in terms of the size, but it does seem relatively well protected. And, uh, uh, 
Uh, there's the little beastie itself. Now, I gotta say, without all the backlighting, it is not a bad looking mouse. It's reasonably handsome looking, I think, uh, for a gaming mouse, you know? So this is just a... Uh, just a matte plastic... Uh, uh, little, I don't know, holder, whatever you call it, packaging for the mouse. Let's pull this thing out and take a look. This has me intrigued. simply says uh, eBlue uh, Aurora Pro Gaming Mouse M639. Uh, and inside it's just instructions, which are half Chinese, half English. It shows the buttons, it shows how to plug it in. <laughs> it says here, just simply plug and play. Uh, talks about, uh, what is this, for bad connection. What does it say? Or detection problem, please check the connecting status in the OS version. So it's some troubleshooting stuff, some tips for cleaning the mouse, these kinds of things. And once again, those specifications. I don't know if you can read it there, but anyway. No. We already saw it on the front. It says here, contents, package contents. Appropriate M639 mouse game <laughs> times one. User guide and a certificate of approval. Let's see if we can find that certificate of approval. Oh, but first, but first. I love this. This is so good. Iron Man stickers, guys. Iron Man 3. Um. I have no idea why there are Iron Man stickers in this mouse. There is no Iron Man branding anywhere on the packaging. I can't imagine this is official Iron Man merchandise, because I don't know why Disney would partner with these guys. I have, I have no idea. This is perplexing and weird and wonderful. Uh, and I kind of love it. It's just such a random back end. It's great. Iron Man 3 stickers. So you can put them on your case and be a real pro gamer. Or on your mouse. Anyway. No, I actually think that's hilarious, but it's awesome. Uh, another... Some more Iron Man branding here. Look, it's Iron Man's head. I am so perplexed by this. This just looks like an e-blue uh, little advert card, but it's all in Chinese, so I don't know quite what it is. Some kind of rights to the Iron Man stuff. 
I don't know. It's weird that they keep using it as a, as a design element. Okay, this looks like a little certificate of approval, I think they called it. <laughs> it's got a check mark on it, so it must be good, right? Uh, I assume this is some kind of quality control thing. It means it's been checked and approved. Or it could just be pure marketing BS. It could be just nothing, but again, it's all in Chinese. I can't read it. Looks like it has a phone number maybe on it, a website, for perhaps for support. If you can read Chinese, perhaps you can tell me in the comments what this says. You can freeze frame it here. I'll show you the other side, because I'm curious. Maybe one of you can make it happen. <laughs> it's a lot of work. You don't feel it. Okay, and finally, uh, what is happening here? It looks like it's telling me to use two hands to hold the box, or like touch the box, I'm not sure, I don't know, I don't know, but I love it. And then there's like a heart on the back side. Oh, this looks some kind of like ecological, it's like the earth and recycle. Maybe this is about recycling the packaging. I bet you that's what it is. Or reusing the packaging or something. I don't know. I don't know, guys. But, uh, at any rate, there's a handful of packets here. Everything one would expect to see is there, except, uh, I don't see any information on a warranty. Uh, and unfortunately on the Banggood uh, store page for the mouse, I could not find anything about a warranty. Um, maybe I need to search a little harder. So I have no idea if this thing is warrantied or how long it's warrantied for. Pretty typically these things have a year on them, but I do not know for sure. So that's an unknown. Might go look it up after this. Okay, so, uh, uh, I'm just gonna have to thread this through here. Can that little, just a plastic cradle. standard packaging. Seemed to hold the mouse well enough though. Protect it relatively well. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oops, that was loud. Okay, so here is the main event, finally. The eBlue M639 mouse. Pro gaming mouse, sorry. To give it its full proper title. So, this, uh, it doesn't feel bad, uh, I must say. The first thing I notice is this lovely braided cable, which actually looks very nice in this sort of bluish color, blue and black. Uh, it looks pretty long. It feels pretty solid. You can see it there. Uh, it feels a lot like the cable on my Logitech G502, which is what I consider to be the gold standard of mice. I've used it for several years now. In fact, you can go watch an unboxing video with it that I filmed a couple of years back. Uh, 
so that, that's a big plus. This looks like a decent length and it feels nice. This cable. This is the USB connection plug, obviously. Standard USB A. It's not gold plated or anything, but who really needs that? It doesn't make a difference. It's all the same, really. At that point, it's just a marketing gimmick. It says E Blue on the plug. So that feels pretty good. Um, it is not detachable, which is fine. I mean, it's a wired mouse, so one wouldn't really expect to be able to detach the cable, but sometimes it's nice for the purposes of routing the cable or whatever to have a detachable cable, but would not expect that here and don't see it. That's fine. Okay, let's talk about, uh, uh, let's look at what really matters here, the clicking and the feel of the mouse. So I have relatively small hands um, for a guy, not super tiny, but smaller-ish, and uh, this feels a little bit big in my hand, just slightly compared to what I uh, am used to with my Logitech G502. Um, but not bad. Uh, the texture, the finish, is a nice uh, matte, soft touch plastic. And uh, that is on the top. And it wraps around to the sides, all the way around, actually. Uh, all of this plastic feels good. It feels nice, and it feels like uh, it's not going to hold fingerprints really easily, which is great. That's what you want to see in a mouse like this. Or a mouse, you know, any mouse, really. Um, in the hand... It's uh, obviously contoured um, to hold the fingers. Now, this is actually, looking at it, it is ambidextrous. Uh, it's exactly the same on the left and the right, except you get thumb buttons on the right. So if you're right-handed like me, those thumb buttons are fairly accessible there. If you were left-handed, those would become, like, you'd have to click them with your pinky or your ring finger or something, and that's awkward. And there are no thumb buttons over here on the, uh, the, uh, right-hand side of the mouse. I don't know, did I call this the right earlier? Anyway, whatever left hand side has the thumb buttons, a forward and a back type button. Uh, right hand side does not, so lefties are left out there, but nonetheless, um, it, uh, it is more or less ambidextrous with that exception. Um, okay, let's talk about the big buttons up front here. Uh, they feel good. I won't lie. Right click doesn't feel quite as nice. I don't know if you can hear, it's just a little more hollow. The left click is nice and solid. Yeah, they're both pretty similar, I guess. Um, it's a little stiffer than I'm used to. slightly, but that's a matter of personal preference, and it is also um, something you would easily get used to, I think. But 
the clicking feels good. And, and there's no issue double clicking or anything like that. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, I believe the product site on Banggood says that these uh, clickers, these buttons, are rated for 5 million clicks, which uh, sounds like a lot, <laughs> but you do an awful lot of clicking in the lifetime of a mouse too, uh, but I suspect uh, it'll be enough for uh, most people. Off the top of my head, I don't know what Logitech or Razer rates their buttons for in terms of lifetime clicks, but um, I suspect that the numbers are all pretty theoretical anyway. They can say just about what they want because no one can really test it. Let's talk about this scroll wheel. So it's got a big chunky, big chunky scroll wheel here. Um, and the scrolling action is nice, and the button feels nice, it's got this rubberized texture. Uh, what I will say though, is unfortunately the, each click is not super precise. Uh, not a lot of indentation so if you're trying to switch weapons with it or move through your inventory or do something with a bit of precision you might struggle a little now my Logitech G502 which again I will compare things to here because I that's what I've got and that's what I use daily and it's what I have the most experience with in recent times uh, the G502 has this wonderful feature where it has a button that sits right about here and you can click it in or out and it will change the scrolling mode from a smooth scroll where the wheel will just spin freely uh, to a, a very clicky tactile scroll uh, and I really love being able to switch between those two scrolling modes because uh, they're both good for different scenarios, right? Um, this is just kind of somewhere in between those two modes, but it obviously doesn't have a mode switch. So that is one item that you lose, dropping to a, a lower cost mouse like this, or one feature, I should say. But it's, it's still not bad. Um, like you can hear... I reckon you can hear that, that it does have little stops in it, and you can move it one notch at a time, as you can see. It's just not super duper uh, uh, tactile about it, I guess. It's not, it's a little soft. The scrolling's a little mushy, I guess you could say. Anyway, but not bad, not bad. Uh, and the depressing the mouse itself, or the scroll wheel itself feels just fine. Nice and clicky. Um, what else do we have here? DPI switch. Let's you change your DPI setting on the fly. I reckon it just uh, probably cycles through. Although near as I can tell, there is no visual indicator of what DPI setting you're on. So, um, a little LED readout or something with, you know, bars maybe, so you can at least see which setting, which of the five stages you're on would be nice. That's a feature that, again, the, my G502 has, so, uh, that is lacking here, but, uh, I suspect this is pretty functional. We'll find out when we try it out. Um, and then those thumb buttons. So that is all the, all the buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six buttons as advertised. 
Okay, let's talk for a couple of moments here uh, about comfort. Um, I, I touched on this briefly. It feels a little large compared to what I'm used to. It is quite um, humped up, like the palm rest here is pretty high, in my opinion. Uh, it fills my palm entirely. It doesn't leave me a lot of room for like a claw style grip. Um, but if you like to palm your mouse, if that's your favorite um, mouse grip, then uh, I think it'll feel very nice in hand. Um, like I said, it's all this, this soft touch plastic, which feels uh, really, really good. I, I like the finish a lot. Uh, and that is all the way around. Um, on the bottom, it's got these plastic feet. One, two, three, four, which honestly feel a little bit uh, tacky to me, which is not what you want out of mouse feet. Um, you want a uh, nice, smooth feet, but uh, that might not be the case once they've been used a little. Uh, also, once I get them onto a mouse pad, we'll see how they glide. You want nice, easy gliding. Uh, also on the bottom of the mouse here, now that I'm looking at it, we have a couple of uh, cool features, actually. We have a polling rate switch, as you can see right there on the uh, uh, on this side. Uh, so you can switch it from uh, 125 through to 1000 hertz polling rate. And uh, on the other side here we've got uh, just a little on-off switch, which is not really necessary, but kind of a nice little feature to have, I guess. If you want to turn it off, it's not a wireless mouse, so you're not saving any power that way, but I guess you can leave it plugged in and have it turned off, which maybe you want for some reason, I don't know. It certainly doesn't hurt to have it. And this, of course, is the optical sensor itself, the laser sensor. There's a little logo. Because why not? And since we're sort of on to aesthetics now, uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Like, it looks an awful lot, actually, like my G502. Um, it's a very similar kind of aggressive shape. Um, it's got these lighting channels that run through the palm, which I suspect will light up when we turn on the mouse. And actually, now that I look closer, I've noticed there's three little, little notches here. Uh, and I wonder if maybe those are related to the DPI switch. And perhaps they will change as we change the DPI. I don't know. We'll see when we get it all plugged in and we get the lights on. Uh, but that, that would be my hope, anyway. Uh, so, overall, uh, upon first inspection, I give this mouse high marks. I think it looks good. I think it feels good in hand, if maybe slightly larger than I'm used to. I think the finish is really nice. Um, I think the clicks, the action on those buttons is very satisfying, clicky, tactile. They all feel good. Um, weight is one thing I haven't talked about. It is lighter than I'm used to, but I like a heavier mouse, and my G502 has uh, adjustable weights that you can add or remove, and I've got them all in uh, to make it as heavy as possible. Um, this, of course, has no, no adjustable weights, but again, you would not expect that at this price point. That's, uh, not expected here, so... Um, you're kind of stuck with the weight that you, you know, that you have, but 140 grams is pretty 
standard for a gaming mouse, and I would say this feels neither light nor heavy. It is nice middling weight. It's just a bit lighter than I personally am used to, because I like them heavier. But uh, it feels good. So uh, the only reservation I have with the, the feel of this thing is, is that scroll wheel, that kind of mm, in the middle wishy-washy sort of mushy scroll wheel. All around though, I mean, it's 28 bucks, right? Uh, and this nice braided cable, right? Look at that. Look at that. Uh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed thus far. But the real proof will be in the pudding. Uh, once we hook this up and I play a few rounds of Overwatch with it, maybe some Hearthstone, maybe some Diablo 3, I'll, I'll try that. Something with uh, heavy, heavy clicking. Um, I'll film some of that for you guys so you can see it in action. And uh, before we do any of that gaming, we'll plug it in here and we'll take a look at the LED lighting effects and the software. If I can get it working, there is software that comes with this mouse. It is downloadable from Banggood via a Google Drive link, which is just about the sketchiest way to provide official drivers or software that I can think of. But for you, dear viewers, I will download it, I will install it, and we'll check it out. Let's go take a look. Okay, so... I've got the mouse plugged into my laptop right now, and uh, as you can see, it is very illuminated. Uh, this model has the so-called uh, crackle pattern on it, uh, although I do believe you can get it without, but you can also get it with a uh, white background as opposed to the black. So, the first thing it did when I plugged it in was default to a breathing type, sort of glowing brighter and softer uh, pattern. Um, but everything worked immediately, the mouse functioned just fine, uh, and the, the backlight was the default blue, I guess. Then what I did was I installed the software. Now I must say, I did not have high hopes for the software for this mouse. Um, just because it was, like I said, linked from a random Google Doc, or Google uh, Drive folder. Uh, which is just about the jankiest way you can provide software uh, in a professional capacity. But, lo and behold, I've got it installed here on my laptop, and it actually looks quite functional. So what I'm going to do here is, well, first of all, I'll change some settings in the software uh, while filming the mouse, so you can see what the impacts look like here. Then we'll switch over to the screen, and you can see what the software itself looks like and the features there. So, let's start off with um, the DPI switch, which is this one right in the middle here. Um, so, that DPI switch, remember I was mentioning it, I didn't think that this mouse had a visual indicator of what your DPI setting was. Well, I was wrong, because when you click the DPI switch, the whole mouse changes color, the backlighting changes, and uh, this is customizable on a, uh, a per DPI uh, basis, so you'll see when we get in the software, but for instance right now uh, the blue color is associated with a 1000 DPI setting for the sensor. And, uh, as we click through, we're increasing our DPI all the way up to the 4000 DPI setting, and then back down to red, which is currently configured 
uh, for the 500 DPI setting. So you can change those colors freely uh, and the associated DPI setting. So that's great. Actually, that's a really effective way of indicating uh, what your current setting is. Uh, and it's fully configurable. Um, what else can I show you here? So there's a tab here in the software called DPI Effect, which you'll see momentarily. But it uh, has a couple of settings here uh, that affect or that uh, impact the lighting. So it's set to standard right now, but it's also got a breathing option, which is going to look really crazy on the camera, probably. Uh, because it'll start strobing. Well, maybe it's not strobing. Oftentimes, as the intensity of LED changes on camera, you get this nasty strobing effect. So I don't know if that's coming through for you or not. But uh, anyway, you can see that it's glowing on and off. Off and back on again. Sort of pulsing. I call that breathe. And of course, if I switch through the DPI, it'll do that in all the different colors. And then it also has an, what they call neon, where it, uh, I believe, will cycle through all the different colors. Yeah, so there it goes. There's more colors than the ones that I showed you. It's got maybe 10 or so different colors. Um, and I think it's cycling through all of them right now. Um, since we're holding it here, looking at it, uh, <laughs> this crackle effect is, is quite gaudy. Uh, it's not my preferred aesthetic, although some people might like it quite a bit. But... Uh, uh, the good news is that if you find this a little too intense, there's a couple of options. One is, you remember that, no, I'll try to shine that sensor in the camera. If you remember on the bottom, there's that on-off switch. And that will turn off the lighting entirely. Uh, it does not turn off the mouse, as I had originally uh, suspected. What it does is it simply turns off that lighting which is excellent, because if you want to use it without any backlight, you've got a hardware toggle there. That's very thoughtful, in my opinion. Uh, they could have just made it software-based, but uh, it's a hardware toggle. You just turn it back on, and it carries on its merry way. The other nice thing is that, uh, at least in the standard mode, so if we switch back to standard, it's no longer cycling colors. We can change the intensity of the LEDs in the software. So let's say this is too bright. We want to bring it down. Let's bring it to 25%. Uh, so it's funny. The LEDs do a little flicker thing when you change them. But uh, anyway, that reduces the intensity of the LEDs a bit. Let's bring it right down. Let's say 5%. So you can see at this point, it's a much more subtle, subtle lighting effect uh, compared to that 100%. Um, and uh, I prefer it that way, I think. Like if I were using this, I'd keep it down pretty low. Uh, okay, so let's just wrap that back up for the moment. And... Uh, Let's look at the software. I'll bring you in here. So, uh, what you can see here is the eBlue software, I guess. It's advertising the Avago sensor up here. It's got a depiction of the mouse on the left, uh, along with uh, uh, options to rebind all of the buttons, which I think is pretty awesome. And as you mouse over each button, it shows you where that is on the mouse. 
so they're all fully rebindable and uh, it even has macro functionality so you can record macros which is pretty darn good actually lots of options here for what those keys can be rebound for and uh, I, let's just open this macro manager at least one button for click warning okay well anyway we'll cancel out of that for now but that should allow you to record custom macros um, so another nice feature here is that you can save profiles up to five separate profiles which I imagine must be stored on the PC as opposed to on board on the memory on the mouse uh, I'm not going to fault them for that. That's fine. That's a pretty standard implementation. Although, with the more expensive mice, you can save those profiles uh, directly to the mouse. And then those will be with you wherever you go. Uh, you know, if you go to a different PC. Um, what else do we have here? So, load, save profile. So, this is what I was talking about here with the different DPI settings. Um, you can, uh, adjust each setting individually. Uh, it seems to snap to the 500s, so those are sort of your limits in terms of the granularity to the DPI, contr DPI controls. Not quite sure what these, I guess you can turn off individual, uh, steps if you want. That's what it looks like to me. Um... And then you can also change the color associated with each DPI step. So, yeah, there's, what, ten. Ten colors. Red, green, blue, orange, purple. That looks much pinkier than purple to me, but that's okay. Cyan, pink, azurite, yellow, and red-purple. Okay, which also looks pretty pinky to me, but I'm colorblind. What do I know? Um... <laughs> And then, of course, your basic sensitivity for X and Y up here, as well as uh, you can choose to adjust them independently or together. You can lock them. Um, and then up here we have this tab with what I was saying, the DPI effects. Um, wh well, what they call the DPI effects, but it allows for... Uh, standard breathing or neon, which you saw. You can adjust intensity on standard mode. And on breathing and neon modes, you can adjust the uh, cycling of those parameters, which is good. And uh, I don't quite know what this effect field is for, because it doesn't seem configurable at any point, so I don't know. But that's okay. Uh, and then finally, we have a tab called System Setting, which allows us to simply change Windows settings, which you can get at through the control panel, but they have them here as well. So your double-click speed, pointer movement, you can uh, turn on essentially mouse acceleration here if you want it. Why would you? Uh, I always keep that off. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's all in English which, well, mostly all in English, except for some of the graphics up here. Uh, and it all seems quite functional. This apparently is revision 1.0.2. Uh, and overall, I'm pretty impressed. Like, this is as good as what I've got from my Logitech mouse, more or less, um, in terms of uh, what it's got here. And of course, the polling rate is not adjusted in software. It's adjusted... Uh, in hardware on the mouse here, so uh, it doesn't need a software setting for that. Uh, so overall, quite pleased with the hardware, uh, or excuse me, the software. Surprised, pleasantly surprised, we'll say, with uh, uh, the way this looks and functions. It all seems to be really good. So let's uh, we'll switch away from that now. And I've got a couple of more things to say about the mouse here before we move into a, a gaming testing session here. Uh, what I did want to say was, I've got the mouse situated here on my, uh, my Razer 
Destructor mouse pad, my trusty mouse pad that I've used for years. It's a, it's got a hard surface uh, that's textured somewhat lightly, this sort of lightly grainy texture. And I mentioned uh, when we were first looking at the mouse that I thought maybe these these little Teflon feet were a bit tacky feeling, uh, but that is not the case. The mouse slides very nicely. Uh, it's smooth, good glide, uh, so no problems there whatsoever. Uh, and again, it feels good in hand. So, uh, so far, like, I continue to be impressed with this little mouse. All right, here we are in Diablo 3, and I'm just gonna go somewhere random, kill a bunch of stuff, click a whole bunch, this is my Crusader character. I haven't played him in ages. Honestly, I haven't played this game at all for quite some time. So, uh, I don't even really remember how he plays. Whatever. We'll be okay. It's only Torment 10. Uh, let's go. Sure, Field to Misery.
Oh god, my inventory on this character. It's a bloody mess. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, we'll leave it at that for now. You had a chance to hear and see the mouse in action, so let's, uh, let's wrap it up, uh, head to the conclusion here, and I'll, I'll summarize what I think about this mouse. Alright, so here we are at the end of a very long review, much longer than I had actually anticipated, but that's okay, right? We took a good long look at the eBlue M639 gaming mouse provided by banggood.com, and uh, what do I have to say about it? Well, first of all, um, after I recorded that little Diablo 3 bit that uh, we just saw, I went and I used the mouse some more. I used it actually extensively, and in fact I edited all the rest of this video using the mouse. So I'm filming this after the fact and putting it on the end. Um, because I wanted to spend a bit more time with the mouse to really get a good feel for it. And the fact of the matter is that I really, really like this mouse from eBlue. I think it's a great product for the $28 US that you're going to spend on it. And in my time with it, um, there were only a few items that I noticed that mm, I didn't like so much that I wasn't crazy about. But let's first of all start off with the positives, and I'm going to list them right up here, <laughs> trying something a little new this time out uh, as I list them off. So here we go. First thing that I really liked about this mouse was the functional packaging. Uh, it wasn't overwrought, it wasn't, you know, full of all kinds of extraneous junk. Uh, it was just a well, protect well protected a uh, compact package uh, with the mouse and the stuff that it needed to have in it. So, boom, that's a plus. Functional packaging. Uh, the second thing that I really liked about this mouse is that it's comfortable. It feels good in hand. Uh, the soft touch plastic uh, repels fingerprints uh, and the shape and ergonomics of the mouse are really quite good. So, boom, there we go comfortable. The third thing that I really liked about this mouse was the long braided cable. Uh, it feels heavy, good quality, uh, and I'm confident that it's not going to break or fray or anything like that. I also liked the action on the buttons of this mouse. They're very clicky, maybe a little more clicky than I'm used to, but uh, they feel solid and satisfying to the press. Something else that I really liked about this mouse was the hardware switches for the polling rate and the ability to turn the RGB backlighting on and off using a hardware switch. I thought both of those were very thoughtful inclusions. I was also really impressed with uh, the software for this mouse, which isn't to say it's incredible software, but I went in with fairly low expectations. Uh, and was pleasantly surprised to see that the software was uh, fully featured and perfectly functional. Of course, a gaming mouse wouldn't be much good if it didn't have a good sensor, and this is another place where eBlue's M639 excels. Uh, the sensor felt good to use. In my usage, I didn't notice any uh, overshooting, any baked-in acceleration or overcompensation or anything like that. There was no jitter. It tracked very well and felt good to use overall. And of course, the price. Uh, for $28 US, this mouse feels just about as good as mice that I've paid twice as much for uh, in terms of its feel in hand, its general usability, its tracking, its build quality, uh, all that stuff is really good. So I think at $28, this mouse is excellent value. And of course, we can't forget the Iron Man stickers, because what gaming mouse package would be complete without Iron Man 3 stickers, right? That's a plus. Throw it up there. So the list of downsides for this mouse is actually pretty short. 
Um, one thing that I wasn't so crazy about was the slightly mushy scroll wheel. I just, it didn't feel that great. It could have used more tactile click. And I would love, love, love to see a feature similar to what I have on my Logitech G502, where you can toggle between a smooth scrolling mode and a clicky scrolling mode. That stuff is just awesome. I really love that. So I wasn't sold on the scroll wheel on this mouse. Perfectly functional, just not exceptional. Uh, the second thing that I noticed, and this was through my extended use of this mouse while editing the rest of this video uh, and doing some more gaming. I played some Overwatch and stuff as well. Um, but I noticed that the liftoff distance is a little higher than I would like before the sensor deactivates. So I tend to lift my mouse off a little bit and readjust uh, my positioning on my mouse pad. And the mouse would keep tracking for a little bit further, a little bit higher off the mouse pad than I'm used to, which would cause me to move the mouse cursor or move my, you know, my field of view or whatever a little bit as I lifted it off and adjusted. Uh, so that's something that I'm not crazy about. It's something you could adjust to, get used to, and we're not talking a lot here. We're talking like a couple of millimeters um, where, where it still um, detects action when you lift it off, but um, that's something that I found to be a minor annoyance, uh, at least. And then the third item that is sort of the question mark is warranty. <laughs> um, there is nothing that I can find about a warranty on uh, Banggood's website, uh, and there doesn't appear to be anything in English, at least, about a warranty uh, inside the box. So I don't know if this product is warrantied or not. Uh, and that's something that would be really good to know. Uh, again, for 28 bucks, eh, it's not the end of the world, but uh, it's something that you would like to see included in the package or on the website at the very least. And then the final item that I'm not super crazy about is the way the software was delivered. Um, like I mentioned, once I got into the software, I found it surprisingly fully featured and functional. Um, but the way it's available from the website uh, is just as uh, a download from a Google Drive folder, which just doesn't feel particularly legit. It just feels a bit janky, honestly, um, because you never know what you're getting, I guess. You know, you would think that uh, uh, they could host their own server or something like that for those kinds of downloads just to give it a feeling of a bit more legitimacy. However, by and large, I was really pleasantly surprised by the eBlue M39 gaming mouse. Uh, and as I've said, for the price for 28 US dollars, you get a heck of a lot of mouse. Um, and it tracks and feels just as good as much more expensive mice, which I think is really impressive. It's lacking a few features that you would see on some of those more expensive mice. And if I had the money to, uh, you know, to spare, would I spend up and get one of those, like, like a Logitech G502, for instance? Uh, well, yeah, probably, because uh, it has features that I personally really appreciate. However, if you're on a tight budget or you just don't care about any of those additional features, uh, the eBlue M639 is uh, a fantastic mouse for the price. I think it's really good. Uh, the biggest compliment I can give it is that while I was using it to play some games and, and edit this video and all that, uh, I forgot that I was using it at a lot of points. Like, I, it could have been my G502. Uh, so that, I think, is uh, quite the accolade, really, quite the accomplishment. So if you'd like to get uh, one of these mice for yourself, there is, of course, a link boo, down below in the video description. And I would like to say special thanks to banggood.com for sending me this mouse to review for you guys. And uh, we'll be looking at a couple other products from Banggood in the not too distant future. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, go check them out, check out the mouse, uh, and see if it's something you want to pick up. Well, 
that's all I've got today, so thank you very much for watching, and I look very forward to having you back here next time. Bye for now.